Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Hope you are okay on that side of the screen. And today, as far as I'm aware, with the cheapest mini computer that it's available to get Windows 11 and dual boot with Mac OS. This is the Shui Core. We have reviewed it here on the channel. I will leave some links right over here. But today we are going to see how to install Mac OS right over here. And before we do, this video is sponsored by cdkeysales.com where we have purchased quite a few keys for Windows 10 Pro, Windows 11 Pro and Office 2021. So if you are looking for a budget key to activate your Windows or Office, visit the link that I will leave down below. Now, what we are going to talk about is the Mac OS on this Chewy core right over here. And honestly, I did spend the weekend to create the EFI folder that I will leave down below just in case you want to download. And if you are used to Hackintosh, you know that the magic happens inside this small folder right over here. If you already know how it works, what I would suggest is just quit the video, download the file, install on your machine, and that is it. I will leave the link for the core box down below as well. If not, stay with me and I will guide you through the steps that are necessary to have Mac OS and Windows 11 right over here on a dual boot system. Now, before we do, there are some things that work really nice and there are some things that don't work as nice. In terms of performance, let me just share the results that I've got in terms of Geekbench comparing to my MacBook Pro 2018, which has the same specifications that I've got on this Shui right over here. And I also did test out Cinebench and the numbers are more or less the same. Now, if we try to edit a video on Final Cut Pro 10, and I'm talking about a video that I did share already, so I know what's right over there. It's a video timeline of about 10 minutes, 4K, nothing special, but in terms of rendering times, we are talking about the MacBook Pro taking six minutes and eight seconds, and the Shui taking seven minutes and 39 seconds. And this difference is only due because Apple hardware is highly optimized with the software and so on. So we will always see this kind of difference in Hackintosh world. Now, one thing I would like to add right over here is that it's smooth to edit the video, but on Final Cut, sometimes I did find a hiccup here and there. Nothing really serious, but it's not as smooth as working on a Mac. So we need to have this in mind. Now, in terms of the guide itself, there are two parts on any Hackintosh build, actually more than two, but in terms of the installation. The first one is to create a bootable USB drive, which is sometimes a headache, and it's easier than what it used to be. And the second part is the installation itself. But if we fail at the first one, then the second will not succeed. So I would say that the most important is the creation of the USB drive. Now the Shui that I've got right over here, and I will leave a link down below so that you guys can check it out, has one SSD that comes included, but we have the availability to insert a second SSD, which I did. I will be using a WD500, and that will be the disk that I will be installing Mac OS. The USB drive that I've got right over here is a sand disk of 64 gigabytes, but you can use a, a pen drive of 16 gigabytes, which is more than enough. And to create the USB drive, uh, what I will do is I will leave down below two links, one of which is if you have Windows, then there will be a guide that I did on video, how to create a bootable USB pen drive. And if you are on Mac OS, I also have a guide showing you that. Now, once you finish that, you just need to download the EFI folder that I've got down below so that you can put inside your created USB pen drive. And that is it for the first step. You don't need to do anything else than this. Sounds good? Great. Let's move on. Now, the next step is to put in the USB drive on the Shui Core box. And once we do that, we are ready to reboot the machine. Now, we will reboot the machine and by default, it will boot through the USB thumb drive. Now, we will choose um, the option of install Mac OS and then we will need to wait for the installation process until we see the first menu that shows us 
to select the language that we want. Now, once we do that, we will get into the menu where we will select Disk Utility and we will format the disk that we want to install Mac OS. Just pay attention here that you need to be sure which disk you will format so that you don't format the disk that has your Windows installation. Just pay attention, it's easy. Now, once we do that, we just go back and then choose the option to install Montre. Then we need to select the disk. In my case, it's the WD500. And basically, that is it. We will need to wait for the installation, which will take more or less 20 minutes on this part. And then it will reboot. And once it reboots, it will show the installer again. Uh, and it will say roughly 30 minutes, but it will not take as long. It will reboot once again and it will show a few lines of codes for a few minutes and then it will reboot again. So it will be three reboots right over here, but we don't need to touch anything. Once it reboots the final time, it will go to the configuration where we will need to select the language and some other options that will appear, the network, Apple ID, user and password and things. And after that, we will have the system ready as you are seeing right over here on screen, which is just awesome. Now we just need two more small steps to have everything ready. One of which is to be able to remove the pen drive and don't use for the boot. What we are going to do is to search and download Clover Configurator, or if I don't forget, I will leave a link down below. And then we will need to choose Mount EFI on our macOS disk that we did install. Once we have that, we will choose Open Partition, and as you can see, it will be empty. We will do the same with the EFI of our pen USB, so Mount EFI, and then choose Open Partition, and you will see a folder, which is the EFI folder that you did download and used on your USB pen. Now you are going to copy to the macOS EFI partition. Once that is done, close everything and we just need to shut down or reboot our computer. Once we reboot the computer, we will need to go to the BIOS and then on the BIOS, we will need to select our first boot disk, our WD500 or the Mac OS disk, which is the one that has the boot loader and it will enable us to choose between Windows or Mac OS. Now, after this, everything is ready you can start enjoying your machine the only thing that will happen is that if you reboot from windows it will remember and will reboot from windows it, and it will start with windows if i don't press anything and if i do reboot from mac os it will restart on mac os nonetheless we will have the boot menu every time and it will stay there for five seconds so if i want to chase from mac os to windows i can just uh, use the selector and that is it. So really easy and simple. Now, things that I would like to add right over here that did not work so well. One of which is the display. I was not able to use the HDMI output, only display port. Actually, I did use the HDMI, but I did have to remove the uh, graphics acceleration and the experience was not good. So the only solution that I got was to use over display port and if you want to do you will have to do that so just have in mind if your monitor has display port or not and if not you will need a adapt the other situation that i was not able to get working is the audio so my solution at this moment is a usb audio this is cheap on amazon i will try to leave a suggestion down below this is usb to microphone and audio output now there is a solution because on all the tries that i did i did end up having internal audio working for a couple of hours but then for some change that i made which i don't remember and did i did a lot of tries i did lose the audio so at this moment is not worth it we just need to pick something like this and the audio will work just fine. Another situation that I was expecting already because the last machine that we did, Akintosh, we had to use this solution is the Wi-Fi. If you want to use Wi-Fi, then you will need to get a USB to Wi-Fi adapter and then you will have Wi-Fi without any issues. This is it. This is a really interesting machine in terms of design as we have seen before, in terms of functionality, hardware, and in terms of the price that it costs at this moment. And with that said, it also has the ability to work with Windows 11, which is what it's meant for, but also Mac OS on a dual boot system, which in my opinion is really, really cool.
especially if you want to start trying out some things and you don't want to spend too much money. And that being said, I really hope that you enjoyed this project, really hope that it helps you to do whatever you want to do with your machine. And if you did, don't forget to leave that thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.